Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas, everybody. This is the Sliders Review. And I'm here today to talk to you in the month of December, since it is Christmas time and the holiday time, about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the 2003 series, season three, the episode, The Christmas Aliens. So, I've never really touched down on the 2003 Ninja Turtles series. Um, I briefly mentioned them a little bit, but never in like detail. Uh, one day I will. I love the 2003 Ninja Turtles series, like to death. It came out when I was in college. And in fact, I love it so much. I think I like it even more than the 80s cartoon because of how more serious it was and because of one main thing, source material. It took reference hugely from the source material from the like, you know, comic books and stuff. And in fact, this episode is based directly from the comic book. And this is why I love so much. It took so much of the great, like, cause back then they only had like four issues. So for the first four seasons, um, they had a lot of stuff dealing with the comic book stuff until they went to like the fifth season, which was kind of like the lost season. I didn't like that season that much. I didn't like all that sorcery, um, fantasy stuff. Then the series got ruined with the um, next season, which was uh, fast forward because, well, the animation remained somewhat the same. It was more streamlined um less detailing what happened it was a lot more sillier they put it in the future and one reason why is because like when you watch the first four seasons and even a little bit of the lost season you realize something just like the comic book this series is dark <laughs> i bet a bunch of parents are like oh no my kids ain't watching this <laughs> And so they had to like goof it up a little bit. Plus they had to try to sell more toys. So with all the silly like outfits they had in the future. Then after that season, pretty much like people wasn't feeling that they brought them back to back to the sewer season. And that season was weird, man. That season was like, they, they changed the designs of like everybody to fit more looking like the 80s series. Suddenly the turtles were shorter like in the 80s series. They had pupils. The animation was very streamlined. April and Casey faces appearance changed. Everybody changed. It was a weird season. It was kind of like a it was like Ninja Turtles meets the Matrix meets Tron. I think Tron was like the second movie was coming out around that time. So or like and yeah, and they just like said hey let's do this and sell toys and it was just a weird season then they came out with the um 2003 slash like 80s movie and that was pretty cool the animation was a combination of fast forward and back to the um sewer and so like and of course you know the 80s style and stuff like that but I really love this like series. I remember I was in my college dorm. I woke up one Saturday morning. I turned on the TV to like the Fox station. And I'm just like, wait, is this Ninja Turtles? Have they been redesigned? Are these new voices? I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> Cause I had gotten to like the second episode. I, had, I didn't even know the first episode of it. And I became like an instant fan of like the art design was beautiful, the color palette, like you name it. So just like with the comic, this is a pretty straightforward episode where it deals with the turtles there in the lair. And this is an adaption. So they didn't adapt everything. They added what's been going on in the continuity of the show. So like, the turtles, they're like, you know, getting the layer ready for like Christmas. April and Casey are there. And so like in the show, like, you know, the turtle friends, they show up. So you had the, um, the dino, um, 
let's see who else you have um usagi uh, i think his name is yamato um uh, no uh, something usagi the, the bunny rabbit dude um that dude with this on the samurai sword so then you also have hamato yoshi he shows up in the spirit form you had the rhinoceros dude with the cut off horn from the comic and stuff uh, let's see who else. Oh, you have the homeless people who live in the um, trash dump place. The professor dude. And you have Angel, which is like a friend of like Casey Jones and stuff. And so like as they are, oh, you also have Super Sentry, which is from the cartoon series. He basically is like Superman of that show. And so, like, you know, they're all getting ready. You have Raphael with some butterfly swords trimming the tree. And everybody's just waiting for one special turtle, Michelangelo, who is late. And so, Mikey, he's just out and about in the city. He's strolling around, checking stuff out in the snow. He's wearing clothes so he can, like, um... Man, I'm so tired. I'm yawning and everything. <laughs> my bad, y'all. My bad. And so, like, he's checking out things in the city. And, um, he's just, like, strolling around. And he's dressed in clothes in disguise. Nobody can see his face. But you can see his eyes. So, you know, they're, like, his, the, 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 the area of his face is green. I don't know how people don't see that. I gotta say, when the turtles aren't wearing their, like, mask. Their faces look weird. <laughs> I've never liked that. It's just strange. <laughs> and so he sees some kids and they have like a sled and he plays on that and he impresses them and stuff. And you know, Michelangelo, he's like the goofy one of the family. He's the youngest. Um, he's the more carefree person. He's the one who likes to have a good time. And he's not very bright. Now, one thing that's interesting is that he says Cowabunga in this episode. Now, the 80s cartoon Michelangelo and the live action Ninja Turtle movies from the 80s and 90s, that Michelangelo is very much known for saying Cowabunga. But in the 2003 series, he is not whatsoever. I think this is like probably like his second time ever saying it. And I remember when he said it the first time in the first season, Raphael got pissed at him. <laughs> and then what's interesting is that when they did that movie with the hybrid of the 2003 and the 80s Turtles, that Michelangelo says Cowabunga, and Michelangelo thinks he's weird for saying that. And I'm just thinking to myself, well, the writers must have forgotten that y'all made him say that at least twice in the series. So yeah, he says his famous Cowabunga line and everything. And so... When he's like, before he heads home, he's strolling around and he finds a little kitty cat, a little orange cat, a tabby cat, and he names him Kronk, which is also from the comic books. Now, there's a version of Kronk in the 2012 series, um, Ice Cream Kitty. And so, like, as he's heading home, he sees that this warehouse full of toys is being ransacked by the Purple Dragon. Now, the Purple Dragons is a street gang that is run by Han and they have a lot of technology they stole from the Triceratops. Basically they want the little alien doll looking toys and stuff and it's supposed to go for an orphanage. So being Michelangelo you know he tussles them around and he steals the truck and basically it's just a high chase pursuit of Michelangelo and the purple dragons behind. Um, he's able to like elude them and everything and then so he sees the cops and the cops are chasing him He's able to get away from them So like when he gets back to the lair, they all like where you been cuz they were hungry. They were getting ready to eat <laughs> And so he's all like, you know, he introduces them to Kronk he um And um so like he tells him that he needs to help and everything. He he still has the toys and he has to get them to the orphanage. So with everybody in the lair, they dress up as elves and Master Splinter dresses up as Santa. And then they go to the orphanage and they pass like the toys out, which is such a sweet, kind thing to do. 
and you know because they, they're considered freaks of nature but nobody knows who they are and stuff and then michelangelo says happy holidays and like the end credits which you know back then people said happy holiday because they didn't want to sound offensive and stuff instead of saying like merry christmas because everybody have a different religion and you know it, it's a it's a pretty pleasant episode it's a pretty straightforward episode there's not like a lot that goes on in this episode other than like april bribes the um silver century dude to like let her beat him in arm wrestling so she can get him some cookies and stuff and then you know leonardo and um usagi they had changed swords for christmas um it's touching to see splinter see master yoshi and like spirit form and stuff and it's nice to see Raphael not being mean like he normally is and because he loves the holidays and stuff and so it was just like a nice cute little christmas episode that's how a lot of these animation um superhero shows are for christmas they're normally like like really sweet and stuff bah humbug that was a good episode all right everybody i'll talk to you later bye